uh, we are required to find the pressure at point B. Now to get the pressure at point B in this vessel you realize in this vessel we are having two liquids. We are having water and we are having mercury. Of course water will float on top of mercury because water is less dense than mercury. Now to find the pressure exerted at this point B we are going to find the pressure exerted by the mercury then we shall find the pressure exerted by the water then we shall add the two pressures and we'll be able to get the summation or the total sum of the pressure that is being exerted at point B in this vessel. The density for water is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed and the density for mercury is uh, 13,600 kilograms per meter cubed. So we begin with our working. It is going to follow that. To find the pressure exerted by water, uh, pressure exerted by water is going to be the height times the density times the gravity. Now the height of the water is only 2 centimeters. But remember, as far as pressure calculations are concerned, this is supposed to be in meters. Because the SI unit for pressure is newtons per meter squared, so this should be converted to meters. So 2 centimeters, to convert it to meters, it's going to be 2 centimeters divided by 100 because there are 100 centimeters in 1 meter. So 2 centimeters divided by 100, we shall end up with 0 0.02 meters. Likewise, down here, converting these 3 centimeters to meters is going to be 0 0.03 meters. So to get the pressure exerted by water, it's going to be the height, which is going to be 0 0.02 meters. Multiply that by the density of the water, which is a thousand kilograms per meters cubed. Multiply that by gravity, which is 10. And our answer at that point is going to be newtons per meter squared. The pressure exerted by mercury is going to be equal to again height times density times gravity now the height of um, this mercury mercury column is just only 0 0.03 meters so it's going to be 0 0.03 meters multiply that by the density of mercury which is 13600 multiply that by gravity which is a constant of 10 and definitely our answer here is going to be 4080 newtons per meter squared now we have the pressure that has been exerted by the water which is 200 newtons per meter we have the pressure exerted by the mercury which is 4080 so to find the total pressure that is exerted at point b is going to be the pressure exerted by water plus pressure exerted by mercury so the total pressure here is simply going to be 200 plus 4080 and our answer will be 4280 and that's the total pressure exerted at b so we find the pressure at point a and at point b so what's the pressure at point A? Remember we said, we, so uh, if you look at this, we have two liquids. We have water, we have mercury. So we are supposed to first find the pressure exerted by the water. Then we get the pressure exerted by the mercury. And then we just simply add the two pressures. So let's look at point A. Pressure exerted at point A. Now if you were to look into this, let's look at the pressure exerted by the water. Pressure exerted by the water is going to be the height times the density times the gravity. Now the height of the water column is 3 meters, so it's going to be 3 meters. Multiply that by the density of the water, which we know as 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Multiply that by the gravity, which is 10. And definitely that is going to give us 30,000 newtons per meter squared. That is exerted by water. So let's look at the pressure exerted by the mercury. Now the pressure exerted by the mercury at point A, definitely the, 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 uh, the weight of the mercury be, uh, above that point is 2 meters from here up to there at point A. So it means it's going to be height times density times gravity, which is uh, 2 meters. Multiply that by the density of this mercury, which is 13600. Multiply that by the gravity, which is 10. And from here, our answer will be, this is in newtons per meter squared. So it means that the pressure exerted, the total pressure exerted at point A is going to be the summation of this, 30,000 plus that. And definitely, of course, pressure exerted at point A, the total pressure exerted at point A is going to be 
272,000 plus the 30,000 and the, our total pressure there when we add this plus that we end up with 302,000 newtons per meter squared. The pressure exerted at point B is going to be a summation of the pressure exerted by this mercury column plus the water column at that point. So of course again uh, the pressure at point A is going to be the same. We already got that as 30,000 up here because the pressure exerted by the water column here will be the same but then the one exerted at point B by the mercury column is going to be different because point B is right here. And so the column of mercury above point B is longer. It is 3 plus 2, which is 5. So from here we shall simply say that the pressure exerted at point B is going to be equal to the height, which is 3 plus 2, which is 5 meters. Multiply that by the density of the mercury, which is 13600. Multiply that by gravity, which is 10. So this is going to become... So this is going to be give us 680,000 newtons per meter squared. The pressure at B. So, so uh, pressure at total pressure at B. This is supposed to be pressure exerted by the mercury column. So total pressure at B is going to be equal to the pressure exerted by the water column, which is 30,000 newtons per meter squared. You add it to the total pressure exerted by the mercury column, which we have just calculated as 680,000. And of course, when we add those two, we end up with the total pressure being 710,000 newtons per meter squared. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. For more of these videos, Simply subscribe and please remember to share this video. For Ksembo Academy, this is Anul Dranga Kuramia.